All right, everyone, welcome back. In one of my previous videos, I assembled this LifePo 4 iron phosphate battery from SunFun Kits. It's a 280 amp hour LifePo 4 battery for storage or solar use, mobile applications and that sort of thing. And I have not done anything with it since I finished it. I finally received some more components to my solar power system for the off-grid workshop. And it's finally time to charge this thing up to a full capacity. And I'm going to be doing that in this video. I'm going to use the SunFun Kits 330 watt LiPo 4 charger. If you have not seen the assembly of this battery, I will link the uh, assembly video in the description for those who are interested in checking that out. A couple of things to mention. On that video, I stated that this BMS inside this box was made by JBD, which is incorrect. The actual maker of the 200 amp BMS inside this battery is Lithium Batteries PCB. It's actually a SunFun Kits labeled battery management system made specifically for SunFun Kits and their specifications. The JBD 200 amp can only manage battery packs that are 12 volt in parallel. The SunFun Kits 200 amp BMS that is included in the kit, you're able to make a 48 volt battery pack using four in series and four in parallel. So there's a big difference between the two and I just wanted to clear that up. Let's get this charged up. Then I wanna run you through the phone app as it's charging and we can monitor the status of this battery and the four separate cells that are inside here. And we'll plug it in and then we'll have a look at the app. It's showing uh, LED2 is green, which says it's charged, but that's not true. And the LED one is red, showing that it's on. This is the SunFun Kits app, and then we'll hit scan. Gives you a permission, set OK. It's scanning for the battery for the uh, battery BMS. Once it finds it, it'll pop that should pop up on the screen here. There we go. The SFK 200 V2. We'll select that and hit connect. And I have a pin number I'll enter here. All right, and this should be showing our battery status. It's on standby, sitting at 13.17 volts. So let's go to tools. Okay, discharge enabled or charge enabled. I have it disabled at the moment, so let's go ahead. We'll set it to charge enabled and update. Now I heard the uh, battery charger come on. Setting update is okay. The fan has come on and now we have two red lights. One indicating it's on and two indicating that it is charging. A couple of other things to note. I didn't mention it in my previous video, but I do have a 5% discount coupon, DIY Home, all capital letters, no spaces. And that'll get you 5% off up to $125 savings on the SunFun Kits website. That coupon code will also be listed along with links to the website for SunFun Kits in the description of this video. Let me take you through the SunFun Kits application. I've got my Bluetooth turned on. We want to, from this uh, front screen, this is version 3.4. And from the front screen, we want to hit scan. It'll give you a uh, permissions statement. And then it'll find the battery pack, or the BMS actually. And this is the SunFun Kits 200 version 2. We'll select it and then hit connect. Right here, let me enter my PIN. Okay, and once you enter your password, it'll connect to the uh, BMS. So currently, the, the state of charge is not correct. I'll need to do a uh, capacity reset once it's fully charged. But this is the uh, main screen and it gives you the volts, the amps, charging at 23.6 amps currently, watts, hours, amp hours remaining, and again, that's not going to be accurate until I do a reset. The BMS temperature and the case temperature, 87.89 and 82.49, and these are in Fahrenheit. SunFun Kits has put out a video indicating that this will be upgraded in the near future. For those of you who are in other parts of the world other than the United States, 
where you use the metric system in Celsius, it is currently uh, giving you Fahrenheit. And then we'll go to details, shows each individual cell voltage, the total power, we're not pulling any power from the battery at this point in time, amps 23.61, voltage 13.37, and then your temperatures, both the case and the BMS. We'll go to tools. You have a discharge and charge, both enable or disable, depending on how you have it set up. But you can turn the battery completely off. You can stop it from being able to be charged by turning off the uh, charging enable. Ambient temperature calibration. If you knew that the, uh, cal you, you know, you could put in whatever the temperature it is actually at, like say you have a, a more accurate thermometer or something, you want to calibrate it. The uh, maximum state of charge, I'm not really sure what that is, to be honest with you. Maximum state of charge, it says service, storage, and I can't read what's underneath that one. I'm not sure what that is. Minimum state of charge, got it set at 25%. Maximum charge amps, I've got mine currently set at 100. Maximum discharge amperage, I have it at minus 150. And I don't know if these are correct. This is just where it's set at the moment. Battery capacity amp hours, it's a 280 amp hour battery. And the temperature for heating, uh, where it turns on the heat pads so that it doesn't charge below freezing. It's currently set at 40 degrees. And again, I believe this is Fahrenheit. Here's where you can reset the capacity. So once I get it fully charged, I will go through the reset capacity. And then here's where you enable a pin if you want a pin for your access code, which I have done already. And I'm not really sure what these two are. Connection reestablish and then pull request something about the communications between the application and the BMS. I'm not really sure what that is. You've got an about section talking about the BMS, the device, ID, and production date, 511 of 22, back to the main page. So we'll let this charge, we'll come back and check that out. Okay, eight and a half to nine hours later, we're at a full charge on this SunFun Kit's 280 amp hour LiPo 4 battery kit. And uh, here's what it looks like in the uh, SunFun Kits app. Full charge, 100% state of charge. It's currently in standby because it's, it's full. 279.99 amp hours remaining. I have done a reset on this battery under the tools. Remember I showed you uh, previously where you can reset the capacity. I've gone through that step. Here's my current state of the cells. 3.46. I think this is programmed to sh shut off the battery charge at uh, 3.5 volts or 3.55 volts per cell. I'm not positive on that. Maybe SunFun Kits will put a comment uh, below in the comment section to let us know where they've got their uh, BMS is set at. But anyway, it seemed to charge real nice. Another thing that I need to note for those of you who have been following this series and watched the uh, video of the battery build, this battery comes with an active balancer that I originally had disconnected. And SunFun Kits recommended that I actually connect that at least for the initial charge, which I did. I went back in and I plugged it in and used the active balancer for the initial charge. They also told me that if I'm at or below 60 amps of, of discharge or charge, that it would be fine to, to leave it disconnected. But I'm, I've got it plugged in. I'm going to leave it connected, and we'll just try it out as it, as it comes in the kit form with everything connected and just see how the battery performs and operates. It seems to be pretty good condition right now. We've got uh, perfectly balanced across all, all four cells, and these are the certified grade A cells that they sell at SunFun Kits. So I think we're in pretty good shape. We've got a good battery here. That was a look at the 12 volt charger that they offer on their website. And it seemed to do a good job as well. It's uh, 23 or 24 amps, I think, max on that charge. So it does take some time if you're charging large batteries like this one here. 
But I'm in good shape, and uh, that's a look at their app. I just got in some new components for the solar, so I'm going to be working on that here soon. I'm waiting on a few products to come from Amazon so I can get all that put together. But when I do, I'll be uh, continuing to produce videos on this DIY off-grid workshop build and get this system in place and set up so we can test it out and see what it's capable of. Click the video on the screen for the next video in the series, and we'll see you over there.